that was just shy of $29,000. Wow. You make do with what you have. To your credit, like, oh my gosh, you pulled it off. We have a friend in the stud stack who is killing it with his business. He quickly grew out of his garage when he landed a $30,000 kitchen remodel. Guys, he did that whole job from his house, from a small garage. And it is super interesting to hear about how exactly he managed that. We're definitely going to talk about that story today, but when he first started, when he joined the stud stack originally, he was selling custom furniture, like a lot of us do when we first start selling our work. But he started seeing these bigger opportunities present themselves, and he has thrown himself at it uh, at full speed. And now he's in a commercial space, and he has filled that up with business too. But what really stands out about Josh is his heart. Not only is he a super hard worker and an amazing skilled craftsman, he's one of the most loving, encouraging and supportive people in the stud stack and probably one of the most that we know. I'm just super excited to share our friend Josh with you today. We're going to help thousands of people today. We're going to talk about some really good stuff. Not only are we going to talk about business, about how to make sales and how to sell your furniture, but we're also going to talk about life, relationships and, and family and how to balance it all. All that comes together when you decide to run a business and navigating that well is going to put you head and shoulders above everybody else. Nobody else on YouTube is giving you this experience today. We are sharing real stories from real people with no exaggeration. And if you enjoy the interview today, you can also meet Josh in person if you come to the Stud Stack Summit at the end of May this year. You can also meet me and Jenny, and you can also meet other members of the Stud Stack as well who run businesses all over the country. And we're almost out of tickets. If we don't sell out before then, April 30th of 2024 is the last day to join the Stud Stack and purchase a ticket to attend the Stud Stack Summit in May. But either way, you're going to love to today's interview. It is packed full of value. And with that in mind, let's jump into our conversation with Josh Howard from Happy Trees Table Company. All right, Josh. So can you start us off with letting us know how you got into making things? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, really, it started back in 2019. It was born out of necessity and tragedy both. Um, Back in 2019, uh, we had an expanding community group that we would meet with on a weekly basis and got tired of putting plastic tables at the end of our dining room table. And so we thought it would be a great idea as postgraduate millennials, if you will, uh, with a very tight and strict budget that it was much easier to build a dining room table uh, on our budget than it was to go out and buy something that facilitated our needs. So we took that very scrupulous budget and uh, decided that we were going to build a dining room table. Um, without having really made anything previous to this, around this time uh, was also when my dad passed away. And it was unexpected, uh, it was sudden, and uh, what came out of that situation was we had this table that needed to be built, and it became an avenue uh, for me to kind of grieve, to have time to process the emotions that I was feeling through that, but also have a goal of building this dining room table to an exact set of dimensions and a look that we wanted to go for, um, it gave me something to focus on uh, instead of just, you know, allowing those emotions to kind of take me over. Uh, and through that process, uh, I fell in love with making things out of wood. And shortly after we finished that first table, uh, my sister was like, hey, uh, we need a dining room table. <laughs> so going from hardly making anything since like junior high shop to now we're two dining room tables deep, uh, it really just uh, started out as just that, as just a hobby and, and making things for ourselves to cut down on the expense of, of, you know, having to go out and buy it because what we were looking for at the time would have cost, you know, four to $6,000. And we were able to build it for much less than that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What an ambitious first project. Holy, right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, yeah, to, absolutely. What a beautiful way to honor your dad's memory and just give yeah. yourself some, 
uh, some closure and some yeah. um, time to just process. It's a, we one of the stories that we hear that's so powerful from woodworking is just how cathartic yep. the process is of just bringing something from start to finish. And yes. man, it, it woodworking you can't just as much as we all try, you can't just bust something out in one afternoon. Like you, it really does mm -hmm. take time, it takes dedication, it takes thought, and. Um, it's it's it is really a beautiful and a lot of times a healthy way to deal yes. with um, yeah. a lot of life struggles. So I don't want to dwell on that too much, but I think that's just a beautiful yeah. way for you to have merged onto this highway mm -hmm. of, of yeah. building things for for yourself and for others. Um, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. If you want to have to, you know, just smack things that you need to deal with right in the right in the face, you know, go out and sand for a few hours and see if you can escape your own emotions and thoughts at that point. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, sanding is extra good for that. I, that's I, for sure. I already cry when I'm sanding, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of catharsis there for sure. Well, that's great. I mean, so you started out by building your own dining room table and then your uh, family member needed a second one. So right away you're doing yeah. another job for a family member right off the back of one that you built for that's yourself. Correct. Um, and I'm assuming that was you know fun and you really enjoyed that project. What made you want to start at that point, start selling what you made? What made you want to take the leap? You know, really at that point so let's fast forward a little bit because then the world shut down and uh it was only through uh, a little seed money from uh just uh, that particular year that we were able to kind of transition our single car garage that was you know 330 square feet into a full-fledged wood shop because you know I, I'm the type of personality that, you know, doesn't just kind of stick a toe in the water when they find something <laughs> that interests them. I go in head first. I don't know anybody um, like that. What are you talking about? <laughs> so as soon as I realized this passion for just creating things out of wood, I was all in. Um, so we retrofitted our single car garage into a full fledged wood shop, you know, pulled it back all the way to the studs, uh, put in soundproof insulation, oh, wow. redid all the drywall, ran a sub panel, you know, did, did all of these wow, things, wow, wow, wow. um, in order to make it function as such. I stumbled upon your guys' channel. Um, and at this point I'm still just doing things as a hobby. Um, you know, like I'm building coffee cup. Uh, uh, I don't even know what you would even call it, but my mom wanted this uh, organizer for her coffee cups. So like okay. I did this really crazy herringbone pattern uh, off of off cuts from our table for these for this coffee cup organizer. It's really just things to keep me out of trouble, yeah. right? Uh, you know, because again, outside of traveling to and from work i was working a retail position at the time a retail management position at the time in between doing that i needed something to do at home because we weren't going anywhere wow. um and so it was really just to keep me out of trouble it wasn't really until uh sometime in 2021 i had shown some of the things that i had made to other co-workers i at this point had transitioned jobs into uh, office management and healthcare. Uh, I was working at a cancer institute locally, um, doing some office management through them. Showed some of the pieces that I had made to some coworkers and things like that, and you know they were really kind of just awestruck at what was being made. Um, and we decided to test the waters with the marketing strategy and just the building strategy of okay, we're going to put together to test boards and see how they do. Um, so I found a coworker that was like, sure, I'll buy this from you, put it together. Um, and it was, again, another really ambitious product uh, project. I think for some reason I thought it would be a good idea that my first cutting board out of the gate needed to be an ingrain uh, checkerboard design, <laughs> like, <laughs> It was it was very ambitious um, and well under costed as a, as we can talk about later uh, the amount of hours that went in that just to test the waters, but within I'd say a week of delivering that I sold twelve. 
Wow. Uh, wow. Right to just to various coworkers, and so I uh, started a discussion then with my with my wife uh, Stephanie, one of my biggest uh, supporters, and said. Hey, you know, there's there's an opportunity here. Uh, they they we might be onto something. There was a lot of reservations then, of uh, you know, just the fear and everything that goes into you know, we have a full time job, full time benefits. You know, no, like we don't need to leave any of that. The interest in selling was there, but we weren't ready to take that full step yet. Uh, fast forward, that decision was made for us slightly in that uh, the full-time, you know, corporate job uh, wasn't working out. There were a lot of hours being put in. They were short-staffed, and it just, it was time to make a change. And so we always say uh, we had four weeks in a prayer. My wife and I, again, had a discussion, and we said, okay, we're going to take four weeks. We had a little bit of savings. Um, to cover our expenses and everything. We've got four weeks to make this work and we'll kind of look at it at four weeks. If it doesn't, I'll go out and get another job, you know, because I'm confident in my ability to do so. And we made the jump. We made the leap of faith then and left the previous corporate job. Um, I had our first client hired for a fairly massive uh, cedar slab and epoxy river countertop uh, job that, you know, uh, was really kind of our first springboard into, okay, we might, we might be able to do something here. So we've been full time now, two years, uh, and we've not looked back. Congratulations. I want to back Thank up and you. ask you uh, a couple sure. of questions along the way. So you said you were confident in your ability uh, to make yeah. something happen in four weeks. I, I know that just from talking with you uh, offline, I know that like that's a big decision. That's not yeah. something where you're just like, oh, no, I trust myself. I'm good. Like, can you unpack that a little bit for us? Just what was it like going into that four weeks, having confidence, knowing that you could do it? But yet I imagine you were still really afraid. So can you speak to that absolutely. a little bit? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just to clarify as well, uh, there's a confidence in my ability uh, to make something of it, uh, but also confidence in that uh, kind of the job market where we live and where we are at the time when we did this, that if we didn't make it in those four weeks, I had confidence in myself to be able to go out and 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 decide to get another full-time job that okay. would pay the bills gotcha. while we were still trying to make this, while we were trying to make this work. Um, but, you know, I, I think a lot of that is, you know, we... We believe in in just a, a higher calling than ourselves, and and you know we trust that the plan that God has for us is the one that we uh, just put our faith in. And when I say that we take a, we took a leap of faith and we had four weeks of a prayer like that, that's all there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We wouldn't be anywhere without our faith in God. Um, so that's definitely center to that confidence, but also we knew the product that we were bringing to people was a quality above what it was being presented out there um, in our area. Uh, but also um, just our integrity and, and our belief in people and our ability to communicate well with others. Um, you know, when... When Steph and I really kind of dreamt up and, and took this idea of Happy Trees Table Company, uh, it's it's not lost on us that, like, there's some really important meals that happen around a table. Um, and so uh, we are intentional with the people that we surround ourselves with, and it's not lost on us that whenever a client comes in, 
uh, that like they're they're investing quite a large chunk of uh, of of their money and their income, their discretionary income, with us, and we don't take that for granted. And so we're we're developing these relationships with our clients because on the projects that we do for most of the people that we work with, we're part of their lives for anywhere from two to 12 weeks in some cases. So, you know, there's a relationship that's built up there. Um, and so that the confidence in treat it was really bedded in, you know, both our faith and treating people well. I love that. Yeah, so let's get right into it. So can you give us a quick uh, rundown of your business, your business yeah. name? Please tell the story of where y your business name came from and then just talk a little bit about what it is that you make and sell. Yeah. Absolutely. So Happy Trees Table Co., as you might uh, guess, is a subtle nod to Mr. Bob Ross. Um, being involved in the arts most of my life, I enjoyed the joy of painting with Bob Ross uh, on PBS many and many a times. As we were developing the business and the business name, we had a lot of ideas, but we knew that we wanted to tailor our business to the custom fine furniture and heirloom furniture lines. So we took a page out of Samara and uh, added the table co to the end of it. You know, we knew that we wanted to as we grew the business, really focus in on our ability to build tables. Um, so, but what we build, uh, to answer your other question, Davis, is uh, when people ask if I can do something, I typically tell new clients, I haven't found anything that I can't yet we are still in our infancy as a business. So we kind of take along the projects that come to us. We're still 100% social media and word of mouth. Um, uh, so really a lot of our incoming sales are through just that, of uh, just customers and clients that we've worked with that spread the news about what Happy Trees does. Wow. Um, so we do, air, we specialize in heirloom fine furniture. Um, last year alone, I think we built somewhere in the ballpark of 15 tables Wow! Nice. Um, for either commercial and residential dining room tables, uh, study tables, the like. Um, but we also do full kitchen build outs. We've done two or three different uh, kitchen cabinetry, full face remodels. Um, kitchen facelifts, built-in bookshelves, you know, anything that kind of falls under that finished carpentry uh, um, hashtag as well. But if you if you name it at this point, we've probably done it. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So I want to I want to talk a little bit now about how uh, how you managed to do all of that out of a 330 square foot garage. Right. Because tables are not small. Kitchen buildouts are not no. small. Cabinetry I, is not no. small. <laughs> and we're gonna try to put them up on the screen, uh, Josh, if you can get us the pictures. But I want I want you guys to see exactly what he built out of his little 330 square foot garage. Um, he made this beautiful kitchen build out, I remember specifically, um, but then also just the other tables and the other things that um, he shared with us that he's made and sold in the stud stack. It's truly amazing what yeah. you've been able to crank out of, of such a small garage. Um, can you talk about what it's like to build a gigantic kitchen like that out of <laughs> such a small, like what yes. does your workflow look like? Yes. Well, uh, I would answer, what is your workflow like? It was lack thereof. <laughs> um, there were a lot of pain points and pressure points during that period. But, you know, it, we knew early on. So I went full time in January of 22. And we probably knew by March that we needed a larger space. <laughs> uh, that dream did not come to fruition until January of 23. Um, so we made it work with the best way we could. 
Um, <laughs> you know, it, in a space like that, thankfully we had tall ceilings. Okay. Um, so it we were able to go up very easily. So like any extra scraps or lumber or just hardwoods, they went up on racks, you know, home-built racks and stuff like that. Um, and also I built a, early on, I built an all-in-one workbench that housed my thickness planer, my table saw, my router table, my air compressor, and my workbench itself. So really it was housed in this five by eight foot, like most of my workflow was housed in this five foot by eight foot little workbench. The other part of that, specifically talking about the kitchen, um, took a very, um, a, a wife with a lot of patience is the best way to explain that because that kitchen had close to 30 to 40 total boxes and they were all throughout the house. They were everywhere. <laughs> and so, um, specifically one of the pain points I can remember is just how many times we had our hands on those boxes. Uh, you know, it's it, coming from uh, a background in retail management and just management in general. It was always we tried to minimize the number of times we touched things. Yeah, and yeah. I know on that particular kitchen, each of those cabinets had to have been touched at least 50 times. And wow. it was just, it hurt my soul <laughs> to, yeah. to have yeah. to, yeah. but you make do with what you have. Yeah, I mean, you did it to your credit. Like, oh my gosh, you pulled it off. Like, like I remember yeah. you telling us about, I think I know which specific, like, exact project you're talking about. I remember you telling us like, guys, you don't understand. There are so many pieces to this. And we were all like, <laughs> I don't know how you're doing it, man, but like, yeah. Keep going. This is amazing. Well, and I can even remember with that first uh, big countertop job with the cedar and the epoxy molds, like this room that you see behind me right now housed like four of those countertop molds, staying up 24 hours straight with those things, making sure they didn't leak on the floors, you know, that they were level, that the, the temperature was controlled all the while, you know, my son and wife are asleep two doors down, you know. It was uh, interesting, is the best way. You know, it was, Man, we learned a lot of things about ourselves that first year um, and what the capacity in which that we could handle. Hey guys, I really hope you're enjoying this conversation with Josh. And I wanted to remind you that you can meet both Josh and us and a bunch of other members from the Stud Stack if you come to the Stud Stack Summit at the end of May. Here's a little bit more info about that, but click the link at the end of this interview if you're interested and you want to jump in. The highly requested in-person meetup of maker business owners. The Stud Stack Summit 2024. Y'all, we have been wanting to do this for years and the Studstack members have been waiting in anticipation. We're hosting the first ever live, in-person Studstack meetup. We're calling it the Studstack Summit. And Studstack members from all over the country are gonna be joining us. Here in Houston. From May 31st to June 2nd this year, join us for a weekend of learning and fun. From a welcome party to a shop tour to discussions and lots of fun hangouts, we cannot wait to see everybody here in Houston, Texas. We're even working on some secret swag bags to give you guys just as an added bonus for coming. There's a lot of fake in the world right now. Fake news, fake success, fake advice, fake motivation. So the theme for this year's summit is get real. We'll talk about how to make real money and have real success in our businesses and how we can turn our dreams into a reality by talking about the real obstacles that stand in our way. It's gonna be a real good time. If you've been considering joining the Stud Stack, now is the perfect time to join. This is a private event for Stud Stack members only, so you have to be a part of the group to be able to get a ticket. And because this is the first one, we've only got 50 spots, so you gotta act fast if you wanna get one of them. Again, this is a closed event. You must have a ticket to attend. All of the details you can find on our website at the link below. We cannot wait to see you guys. Jump in the Stud Stack and get your ticket. I love, Josh, one of the things that we love most about you is that you just, you are not the kind of person that just makes excuses. Right. You you make reasons to get it done. You don't make excuses. So it's just been, it's been great to get to know you and to, to deepen our friendship over the years and just, um, I don't know, I feel like we're sort of that way too, or at least we like to think that we are. But 
it's just been so cool to watch your business grow um, alongside with ours as we just refuse, no matter how often we get hit in the mouth with um, <laughs> business woes from all directions. Yeah. Yeah. We just, mm -hmm. we continue to get up every morning and it's not perfect, it's not easy, but you know what? We're, we're gonna make progress. And yes. I just, yeah. Yes. yeah. Our hats are I off mean, to you we're, for pulling that we're off. We're all humans, we're all fallible. We all make mistakes, you know. Uh, I, thankfully, uh, you know, I mention her a lot, but Steph is a huge encouragement to me and um, is really like I, I tend to be the one that's got his head up in the clouds and she's the one that tethers that string to me to pull me back down every once in a while. I'm the ambitious one. I'm full of dreams and just where, you know, uh, where we're going to take Happy Trees to. And she's the one that, you know, has to slow us down every once in a while. But thankfully I have her support and and that it drives me a lot uh, most days. That's great. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely not wi without its uh, bumps and bruises, that's for sure. So of all the things that you built out of your garage, um, what was the, if you don't mind sharing, what was the most expensive project that you built in that tiny garage? Oh yeah. Uh, single, like hands down, it was definitely that first kitchen. Okay. Okay. That was just shy of $29,000. Wow. Um, wow. wow. So... That first year, now this kind of bleeds into that second year. I think that first year we finished with a just shy of about 50000 maybe $60,000 in sales wow. out of our garage. That's, Gosh, awesome. that's so cool. That's great. Yeah. So now granted, you know, it was a fairly large project at the tail end of that. Sure. Um, but, and we had some smaller odds and ends projects out of there, but definitely that kitchen was the largest job that we did out of our 330 square feet. Wow. That's over, that's over a hundred dollars a square foot for the year. That's some valuable real estate right there. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. I think it's so helpful um, for people to just wrap their brains around real numbers. Yeah. Um, I think that a lot of times there's there's thumbnails that are thrown around and um, just numbers coming from everywhere that are just, uh, they're, they're honest numbers, but we lose track of what the numbers mm -hmm. mean yeah. just because they get yeah. thrown around. Yeah. So um, I always try to like, when I'm building something, I always think about how much it's going to, you know, be as I'm making it. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm heavily motiv money motivated. So when I see a stack of cutting boards that I don't want to sand, I look at how much money it is and I'm like, oh, okay, right. I can sand right. it for that much. Right. So if you look at the tiny garage and you're like, but $50,000, you know, it's like, yeah. it's, yeah. yeah, it's good for people to be able to tie a number to something in reality and see that it is possible. There are people making that sort of money and running that type of business out of a, a space that garage. size. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, it was it was important for us uh, starting the business that, you know, uh, Steph's one of Steph's larger hangups in the beginning was how are you how are you gonna get paid? You know, like I, I love that you want to do this, but like we have a mortgage, you know, we need insurance, we need to be able to keep our lights on, and how are we going to do this? And so, uh, you know, really converting that space and utilizing it as in our home uh, that first year, you know, like we started the business and continued to try to function the way we didn't want any overhead, you know, because all I needed to make a wage uh, from day one, and, you know, we needed to be able to expand the business later on down the road. Yeah. So let's talk about expanding the business. Yes. So um, yeah. you are in the top tier of uh, maker business owners that has graduated past the garage um, and gotten into commercial real estate. Do you want to talk about your uh, yeah. dipping your toe into the uh, the wonderful world of actual business because it's sure it's sure. a big step so, up isn't it <laughs> yes it's it's a whole new world after you know uh the, you know there are some advantages and disadvantages i've got room that like i don't trip as often in the <laughs> commercial space uh but you know we definitely have to watch pennies differently yeah. than oh, yeah. we did uh uh previously so uh, about a year, it's just been a little over a year now. We've been in our commercial shop for uh, 14 months. Um, as I mentioned before, we knew really early uh, 
uh, that the garage was the longevity of the garage was it was it was quickly approaching its expiration date. Um, so we began, you know, we spent. I'm going to say between six and ten months looking for a commercial space. And this one kind of fell in our lap. Uh, we had kind of just exhausted all of our other resources, had really just said, okay, like, we're, we're going to buy a CNC machine and we're going to convert this extra bedroom that we have in our house to, like, it's going to be the CNC room. We were just going to make it work. It was about a week later that uh, our local, uh, one of our local chambers posted this space and they were, uh, it was uh, 4,000 square feet, but we couldn't afford, there was no way we could afford 4,000 square feet. So they were going to let us sublet it. They were going to let us sublet the space that we figured we needed um, and the price was right for us as far as you know our our monthly rent and what we were we were making at the time and the jobs that we had lined up and so again uh we took a leap of faith and jumped into it and we moved in about january 10th of 23 uh is when we moved into that space and we've been there now for 14 months so i know that moving into a commercial shop at least for us was incredibly intimidating um, fortunately, we had an amazing yeah. broker from our church group that helped us out. But um, even then, it was still, uh, it was a whole new world. I didn't even have a way to think about it. I didn't know the vocabulary. Yeah. I didn't know what, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so uh, the crazy part about commercial real estate, at least, is when your business is, is thinking about expanding beyond the garage, like literally everything is negotiable. There's uh -huh. very little in the mm -hmm. way of standard business when it comes to commercial real estate. So you can, there are, there are leases out there where you just get a concrete slab and four walls and then you're responsible mm -hmm. for everything else. And then yeah. there's other leases where they pay all your bills. They pay any changes you want to make to the inside. And you know, you're probably going to pay more in rent for that, but yeah. uh, everything in between is negotiable. I mean, we, um, uh, it's just crazy. Like our broker started asking us like crazy questions. He's like, if you could like build the building yourself, what would you want in there? And I was like, well, I don't know where their plumbing lines are. He's like, don't worry about plumbing lines. Yeah. That's their job. <laughs> you tell them where you want the sink. It's, and he's it's, like, and we'll negotiate it somewhere. Like, yeah. it, was, it was very overwhelming for me when we started to consider going yeah. beyond the ground. And that was something that we had thought about. It was a goal of ours for a very long time. And we were still intimidated when we got there. Uh, mm -hmm. of how to do it and it was very overwhelming so did you get that same sense of like I really don't know what I'm getting into or but I know I need to do it so, so. yeah yeah it was I mean it was a big step where this fell kind of in our timeline is we had just finished up that first kitchen we had another kitchen on the way and so where we fell kind of in our our timeline of finishing things was we knew we couldn't do another kitchen out of the garage. Like it was just, it was not feasible to do. I can remember feeling like the imposter syndrome set in real hard when we were making that, you know, when we signed over a check for $3,000 and we're like, you know, this is uh, almost a 10th of what we made the year previously uh, for the entire year. You know, this is, this is a, that wasn't lost on us. The imposter syndrome set in real quickly. And again, I think part of that is the responsibility that I put on myself as not only the business owner, but the primary caretaker of our, you know, provision uh, provider for our family of, you know, like I have a responsibility to still to do this now, but also still pay myself at the same time. Yeah. yeah. That's a tough um, and so it was a balance, but also, you know, not letting that kind of just uh, that imposter syndrome and those intrusive thoughts, if you will, kind of break through and, and, and allow it to overtake uh, myself and what we were doing for the business. Um, early on, once we were, got, honestly, I was so relieved to have room to move. Right. There wasn't a lot of overwhelm. It was so much relief 
you know, we yeah. had we had just added the CNC machine as well. Like the CNC machine was delivered to that new space. And it was such just a, an answered prayer and has continued to be so uh, throughout our the 14 months that we've been there. It's just afforded us so many more opportunities that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. I definitely remember the feeling the first day we were here. I just like, I was like spinning circles out in the shop, just like running around, just I couldn't believe that I could. You're like, and I'm gonna trip on nothing. This Except is fantastic. For Bruce. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I tripped over Bruce. It was so nice, yeah. like to be able yeah. to take three steps in any direction and not fall over myself. <laughs> and to have a workflow to choose. Yes. Because before, yes. Like, you know, the space mandated the workflow and the efficiency, but That's now getting exactly the space. That's exactly right. Something we thought about a lot when we first moved in is we're like, what do we, how do we plan out where the tools are going to go? Like, do we put tape mm -hmm. on the ground and we're going to want to move things like five times, you know, and you finally have the freedom. I drew so many pictures of what the workflow was going to work like, look like in our space because we also had to have some electrical drops added yeah. uh, as well as part of you know moving into that space because uh, it was ran for single phase 220 but there weren't any spots to like plug in machines and we had just added the CNC we knew we needed the the power drops throughout the shop so yeah no that was I definitely drew out plenty of workflow plans uh, whenever we we moved into that space. Yeah, I just remember spending hours in SketchUp trying to just yep. think about it or imagine like, okay, the lumber's gonna go through here and is this enough space? It was, it yeah. was a totally, it was a wasted exercise because you don't know how much room you know, you need to carry a 12 foot piece of lumber until, until you're got actually it in, your hands. in the space. Exactly. So we spent so much time sketching stuff up and it all yeah. changed after we built the just, first batch of just boards. Just wadded it up, threw it away. It's like, no, this is how it's actually going to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our yeah. stuff is still no. on wheels. I still don't yeah. like where everything is. So important to keep everything mobile too. So who would you say through all of this, it's been such a journey. Who has encouraged you to keep building your business and to keep going? Um, well, that's a great question. Um, I've had some time to think about it. And first and foremost um, has always been Steph, my wife. Um, we will celebrate 17 years of marriage in about four months. Congratulations. Uh, just, a, just a little, actually, um, when we come down for the Studstack Summit, hashtag uh, excited, that Saturday is our anniversary. <gasps> um, oh. It will be our 17th wedding anniversary. And you're going to waste it with us? <laughs> We've already had the you owe me big time uh, conversation. <laughs> oh. No. She's really excited about it. it as well. This is for <laughs> Steph. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> she has always and continues to be my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. I, I We always joke and say for tax purposes, she's a, my unpaid intern. Um, <laughs> but she comes and helps at the shop um, uh, close to part-time. Even some weeks it's full-time. Um, helps, you know tape things off and paints and she is the edge banding queen as <laughs> far it. as you know we're still doing a lot of our edge banding by hand um just a good old iron and some trimmers um and she's awesome and never complains um oh. you, early on she developed a little jingle to herself that she sings sometimes that is i support you in all your endeavors oh, <laughs> um, that is so, so sweet it's really incredible to have a partner that is so supportive and encouraging and picks me up on days that I don't want to do it anymore and that are hard and I'm, uh, you know, crying into her shoulder because it, we've got deadlines to meet and real life is just comes crashing down and we we have expectations that either we have set or our clients have set and like we need to meet those expectations and it all just comes you know it's circling around and to have her there to keep you know a level head and be that sounding board for all of my you know up in the stratosphere up in the clouds ideas um she has definitely been uh 
the the biggest encourager um, since we started the business. And thankfully, we have you know some of our clients have been family members. You know, so uh, as we've started the business. You know, I have a dining room table in my sister's house. I have projects in my mother's house. I have, um, you know, our first kitchen that we ever built was for Steph's mom and dad. So my mother and father-in-law. Um, shout out to Mike and Joyce. <laughs> um, uh, so we have a very tight-knit support network of uh, just people around us that continue to encourage us and, and see what we do and, and believe in what we're doing. Um, and that shows through them continuing to share social media posts and, and to talk about uh, our business amongst their community circles. Um, and, and really just, uh, other people within the stud stack, you know, some of the projects that they are also doing, uh, and just the their give back mentality has also been an encouragement. Um, but yeah, those are those are really uh, people I would say that have encouraged us most. Awesome, very cool. I love it's that. so it's so important to have that encouraging community. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we're Jenny and I are realizing, like. In hindsight, it's a lot clearer, right? Hindsight's always twenty twenty. And one of the things that we're realizing is that we would not have made it anywhere close to as far as we have had we not had a large network of encouragement. Oh yeah. Um, stud stack aside, like friends and family and everything yeah. else, like it, it's so it's so important. I I don't even think you could conceivably make ten thousand dollars just on your own. Um, Gumption. Even that takes encouragement from somewhere, whether you've got to go rustle it up yourself and find it, or if it comes to you. I mean, there is a big aspect of that, even just to like hit your first 10K. Right. And I know we, we sell the stud stack and, and that's our that's our thing, mm -hmm. but like we really do believe in it. It really is a, yeah. a way to get that sort of encouragement network because when we were in the military, mm -hmm. there was not a lot of encouragement. We had some friends that were very encouraging, um, but there were no other business owners that we could um, look to, to for support or to, to ask yeah. questions. So, like, isn't your commercial space like across the street from the local chamber of commerce? Uh, it is. Yes, it absolutely is. Like we share. Like I, I get to take the five hundred steps to pay my rent at the first of every month. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. No, it's not very far at all. So, like, we have. The encouragement from our director of entrepreneurship for our metropolitan area uh, coming over and just being an encourager because he's a also a previous small business owner through multiple small businesses uh, did that for many many years uh, prior to becoming the director of entrepreneurship so he's been a great encourager as well um, but yeah it it is directly across the street. Um, from our local chamber of commerce. So one more thing we want to ask is when it comes to your business, would you say now, like, is it worth it? Do you wish you would have kept it as just an idea, like stayed a hobbyist and maybe always had the dream to do it? Like how, how do you feel about having started it? Uh, a resounding yes. Um, I think, you know, really, the entrepreneurial spirit has kind of been within me for 10 plus years. Um, you know, as I was um, working in retail management, uh, I started uh, managing my own retail store in 2015, uh, but I had started to look into that aspect of things Prior to even that, you know, our son was born in 2013 and it was always kind of providing not necessarily a legacy, but something to build towards for him. Um, and so that entrepreneurial spirit has been there for a long time. Uh, it wasn't until six, seven years later that we took the dive. Um, if I could go back and tell, you know late 2020, Josh, four years, you know, three and a half, four years ago here, uh, what now would look like, we would have taken the dive much sooner. Um, the 
the what's the right just the opportunities that owning my own business has afforded me since we started you know being a retail manager was great you know a consistent income consistent insurance but uh, as many others who have experienced retail management will know, there is no time off uh, as a retail manager. Even when you're off the clock, you are not off the clock. Uh, now, that's I'm not saying that's any different from a small business owner because I <laughs> still get not. Facebook messages about client work and stuff like that at 9.30 at night on a Wednesday. You know, so... Um, but the difference is, is now I get to choose if I answer that at 9.30 at night on a Wednesday. Yep. And that's worth all um, the money in the world. <laughs> yeah. The amount of time that it has afforded me to be with my son and my wife on a regular basis and to set personal uh, and business boundaries to take weekends off to be intentional with them and just i get to be at any of his school activities i get to you know if my wife has something that pops up and i need to pick my son up from school i can pause and go and pick him up on a moment's notice you know if she has and it's honestly it's afforded opportunities for her as well to take care of her community of friends and girlfriends and stuff like that that she wouldn't be afforded otherwise. We've always been blessed that Steph has been a stay-at-home mom while Declan has grown up and been school age. She's been able to work from home. Now it it's even um, it's expounded even more so that she is able to you know go have lunch dates with. Uh, friends and girlfriends and have that life outside of just working from home uh, because if there's an emergency with one of those girlfriends of hers she can uh, go and tend to that and I can take care of her son uh, at you know like I said at a moment's notice um, so is it worth it yes I wish I would have done it sooner there are days you know you caught me on a good day uh, there are days you ask me the same question, I, I would say, no, it's not. It's definitely not, you know, that <laughs> it was it was touch and go. That first big project that we had, you know, I can still remember, I'm human, I'm fallible, I make mistakes, and I made a very costly mistake on that first project, you know. Yeah. We yeah. cut a sinkhole too wide, uh, or a sink opening too wide and it was on a already poured slab and so you know we're talking early stages of business it was an almost two thousand dollar mistake so you know I we still made money but I think I got paid five dollars an hour that first job and so but we took that and we learned from it and we uh, you know continued to grow from there and so Thankfully, even through our hurts and our hangups, we've been able to turn those into success stories. I love that. I love what you said. When you when you choose to dive in as a business owner, even if it's just a side hustle, like you're opting for a roller coaster ride instead of a merry-go-round ride. Mm -hmm. yep. The the highs are higher, but the lows, lows. are lower. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I, I think it's more fun than a merry-go-round, but you know, <laughs> some people awesome. some people value the stability, but other people, I don't know, it just some of us are just drawn to that adventure. Um, that's sort of the whole motto of what we have up on the wall of like follow your fears. Mm -hmm. Like some of us that are called to this roller coaster life, um, we know that that's in us for a long time before we start to act on it. But I don't know of anybody that's signed up for it that's completely regretted it. Yeah. They, they've learned from it, they've grown, and uh, they don't see their life any other way than the way that they've lived it. And yeah. um, to me, that's that's a version of fulfillment that I can get behind is mm -hmm. no regrets and just living out your fullest potential. And um, I, I think that's something that we want to start talking about too, a little bit more on our channel, um, is just not not to be doom and gloom all the time, but like there are going to be some rough days. Oh, I feel yeah. like uh, absolutely everybody's looking for a distraction on social media. Mm -hmm. So obviously the thumbnails with more money uh, click better. But at the end of the day, like I want people to understand what they're getting 
into. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The highs are amazing, but there yeah. there are some days where you're just like, man, I don't know. Yeah, the lows make you question just about everything. But then that just makes the wins uh, even bigger. So. Right. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, there have been from the first time that we took, you know, a $15,000 check to the bank, you know, for a down payment on whatever project it is that we're working on to, hey, we need to find another job or we're not paying rent this month, you know, to like it is absolutely the high, the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and everywhere there in between on, you know, the day of like, just putting the work clothes on and going up to the shop again, it's, you know, it definitely has, you, you just have to, you just have to take it one step at a time. And I think, you know, this is a ridiculous uh, reference to uh, equate to business, uh, the goings on of business, but, uh, there was a song, and, and again, forgive me, my son's 10. He loved this movie uh, when it came out. But there was a song in Frozen 2 when it came out that said, just do the next right thing. There are days where that's all you can do is just yeah. do the next right thing. You know, go to the shop when you don't want to, you know, but also be aware of like when you're having that yellow day, it's okay to have a yellow day. Yeah, we uh, actually today was a yellow day. We uh, <laughs> we, were, yeah. we were pretty tired. We were overworked. We, we just finished building. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, I don't know when this is going to come out, but we just built 150 cutting boards in two days. Wow. Um, so we were feeling pretty beat today and uh we just went home like yeah. we just went home for the rest of the afternoon like and at, then... at noon or so we're just like i'm, I'm going home <laughs> so no and it's, and it's important to be aware of those kind of days you know we had a day i can't even remember remember what project it was on uh recently it was a few months ago uh that we had just busted tail uh get ready i think it was on uh we built a mat, uh, primary bedroom closet uh recently just went up on our uh social medias uh, you can see it over there at happy trees table co on instagram uh the same thing on facebook and then uh www.happytreesco.com is the website so uh, they're all up over there. We just finished a huge primary uh, bedroom closet. We were jumping right into our next project. And I turned to my wife who was helping me in the shop that day. It was 1130 in the morning. And I go, we're done. <laughs> we're done today. You know, like, the, like we've got nothing left in the tank. We need to take care of us. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Yes. So, yeah. No, well being done. aware of that is super important. <laughs> So as we said in the intro, Josh is one of the most encouraging people that we have ever met. He's one of the oh, most yeah. loving and intentional and he Genuine. won't he won't let you brush off uh, anything. He he's just one of those friends that's just he's he's going to stick with you. Um, Josh, not to put you on the spot, but uh, you've got the whole stage to yourself. If there's a maker out there that's selling what they make and they want to grow and they want to build a business or just just do something bigger than what they're currently doing, yeah. could you could you offer a little bit of encouragement or um, is there anything you want them to know? Uh, don't let the intrusive thoughts win. Uh, that's what I would start with. Um, be true to yourself. Don't let a bad day in the shop define who you are. You have the confidence in yourself that you know what you are doing is what you are supposed to be doing. Um, and just as far as uh, an encouragement, just be intentional with your clients. Be as transparent as you can be. Your customers, the people that you surround yourself with, other business contacts through your local chambers, your networking groups, your marketing groups are going to pick up on that intentionality, whether you mean them to or not. Uh, be intentional in those relationships, be transparent in those relationships. And it's 
give as much as you hope to receive, um, even more so. You know, give if even on the days that you don't feel like giving, give. Um, those those are the big ones. You know, be true to yourself. Be truthful to the people around you. Surround yourself with people that are also going to be intentional with you and hold you accountable uh, whenever you need that accountability. I love it. That's some excellent wisdom there. Thank yes. you so much. If you want to be encouraged personally by Josh, you can join him uh, with us from May 31st to June 2nd. We're having our first official uh, stud stack meetup here in Houston. And Josh is uh, going to come. A bunch of other stud stack members are going to come from members from all over the country are going to come here. And we just can't wait to spend the weekend together so that we can get real about our business and talk about um, what, what it takes to, to really grow this thing and grow yeah. as people as we grow our businesses. So um, we can't wait to see everybody. Um, Josh, you have been an absolute pleasure to have and to just ask questions. Um, I really do value Thank our friendship. You. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I do as well. I'm just so glad that I, we get to share that with, uh, with everybody watching. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. You, you all make it very easy. Uh, as very uh, gracious hosts. Well, thanks, Josh. Yeah, so make sure you go follow uh, at Happy Trees Table Co. Yes. on Instagram and Facebook. And then check out their website as well. They just launched their website. And uh, we would love uh, if you would subscribe so you can see more content like this in the future. Let us know down in the comments if you enjoyed this interview. Let us know what stood out to you the most yeah. about um, Josh and his character. And we would just love uh, if you could encourage him in that way because he's encouraged us and everyone else in the stud stack yep. for so many years. So uh, thanks, Josh. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Stick to the